Streamcast. Hey yo. Welcome to another edition of the Streamcast. My name is Blackamora, and today we have a sad episode, but hopefully one that we can give you some good vibes as we remember one of the greatest creators of all time. I am here with one of my best friends. Please, everyone, give it up for Pasta Salt. Nee, 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 nee. Nee, nee, nee. What's going on, bro? I'm good, man. How, how, how are you doing? Good? I'm all good, thank you for asking. Yeah. I wanted to shout you out while you're on screen. The uh, Prince of Pokemon. The Pasta of Pure Salt. He's out here. He's laying hands yes. in, fo- in football, in fighting games, in Pokemon, in other means. He's out here cleansing the people and the ops. Yes. You, the you need salt bay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a great meme. Oh. All right. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know who you are, what you do, would you like to give them a quick minute, maybe, of what you do at Pass Assault? Okay, so said i am the pastor i am officially a pastor i am a lord as well so lord pastor whatever floats your boat um yeah we're, we're about the the salty side of gaming we we like when when the game gets under your skin and, and makes you rage in but in a, in a wholesome in a wholesome nature like we we particularly love fifa and mario kart anything that gets the friends together insulting each other Again, again, in a whole, in a wholesome way, we 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 cover loads of games. We cover um, board games as well, and obviously Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yes, board games, video games, and card games. Yes. And on this episode, we are here to talk about the passing of Kazuki Takahashi, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, I have never seen his face until you know, the last week when he did unfortunately pass away. But mm-hmm. I've always remember seeing his name on like the little Yu-Gi-Oh cards, whether they're the fake ones or the real ones. I just remember seeing his name and like copyright 96. So I was obviously a big fan. I really knew who he was. Do you remember your first ever Yu-Gi-Oh memory? Oh, my first memory is the first episode. The first yeah. episode where Kaiba I'm pretty sure it's the first episode where Kaiba rocks up and just kidnaps an old man. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is the first episode. It is. <laughs> like, uh, imagine being like a, a, a 14, 15 year old. I can't remember their ages. Like, yeah, I'm a 15 year old kid. I'm a, I'm a rock up to a, a well established game shop. I just kidnap the owner. Like, that, that, that's, you are a businessman. You are you are a, an official businessman, and this is how you do business. I'm not gonna lie; it screams white privilege to me. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> imagine, imagine like we we want to go to I don't know, like Blizzard. Yeah, we 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 demand to see the CEO of Blizzard, and he's like, "Who who are these scrubs?" Yeah, and we're like, "You know what? Just burst through the door. We just kidnap the CEO of Blizzard, and we're like." Right, you work for us now. You're gonna do. You're gonna get us the reputation we need to make it. It's like you can't. You can't just kidnap people. <laughs> Man, I remember hating Kaiba from episode one because of the kidnapping. But even worse, and I don't know why, when he ripped up the blue eyes, that broke my heart. <laughs> I wanted to jump through the screen and punch the man up. I was like, how dare you rip up a card? <laughs> But the thing is, like, it completely contradicted everything. He's like, I want this. And he's like, no. He's like, but I'm going to take it. There's nothing you can do about it. I have the card now. Like, the old man's already crippled on the floor. I don't understand how. I've never understood how him having a card game has broken his back. Never understood <laughs> it. Like, th- th- there's handles on the, on the machine as well. So, like, it's not like he's, he's just like free board. Like, he, he's holding on to the handle. Like, but he has structural support. And so, suddenly his, his back's broken and he's, he's crippled. But, but yeah, it's like you, you have the thing you wanted. There's nothing anyone can do about it. And then you're like, yeah, I think we just rip it up. Why? I mean, 
of course it was great character development, but I feel like if I'm Kaiba, I could just have that in my deck, right? And like, maybe combine all four of them. It it didn't make sense to me. But the, the thing is, that especially in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh, the rules were so flippy floppy anyway. Like obviously now it's a case of you're limited at three, but mm. maybe in the initial you could have put the fourth one. So like if anything, you may have even like paid a, a top artist to make a fifth one and stuck that in your deck as well. <laughs> yeah. And Yugi did cheat a lot in Duelist Kingdom. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> the thing is, it's not just him though. It's like everyone cheated in their own ways, and I love it. It's, it's, it's not just like the, the standard. Like, I mean, obviously he had the plot armor, mm. but it's not just like the standard plot armor. Like everyone got a sprinkle, got a little, little <laughs> sprinkle of it. I do love how that's bled into real life a little bit. Like you need to call it out if you see someone cheating. Otherwise, <laughs> you know the ref doesn't see it. The ref can't call it. I mm-hmm. do. <laughs> I do love how Yu-Gi-Oh can be very scummy in real life. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that was so. I, me and Isaac, um, sh- sh- shout out to Streamcast fellow. Uh, we, we we used to play um, uh, some Yu-Gi-Oh locals quite quite a lot. Um, do you mind if I shout them out? Yeah, sure. Um, there, there's a there's a group in in Bermondsey called the Brotherhood amazing people they're, they're run by a family and so, some of they're, they're scum in there as well not the family but like the people that you will meet they're, 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 listen if you can't shower on a summer's day knowing that you're going into a room with 60 Oof. other people and no windows hey listen it ain't, it ain't the one it's not the one because we I'm all sick. smell you yeah and you get worse throughout the day because that's hot <laughs> no i don't approve i don't approve of it and then there's and then there's them dirty men as well. You have to take their shoes off when they're sat, sat down dueling as well. Oh, I want to feel comfortable. Uh, nah. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> but outside of the handful of them, the, the people at Brotherhood absolutely top class, amazing people. And when me and Isaac first started playing like properly, um, they 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 gave us some tips. They showed us how to how different decks work and everything. Like top top class people. Um, but yeah, one there's one guy in there. I'll never forget him absolute dick he talked so much that he convinced isaac that he was allowed to attack on his turn so isaac is in the middle of his main phase he's played a card down the other guy has uh, reacted to it and then it's then drawn out his phase and he's gone i'm going into battle phase and i'm attacking you and i'm like but isaac it's your turn what? The... and then he the, the guy's defending himself so like, oh no i can attack it's like I, I may have been out of the game for a couple of years, <laughs> but I know how the game works. Oh, also, I'm an official Yu Gi Oh judge. I know how the game works. <laughs> <laughs> you can't attack on your opponent's turn. That is one of the fundamental rules of Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> and, and, and Isaac was so confused and so baffled because the man just kept talking. Yeah. He just kept, just kept running his mouth. And I'm, I'm like, Isaac, he's cheating. And mm. he's like, I don't know if he's. And I'm like, he is though. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. The, the scumbaggery yeah. is unbelievable. That's very unfortunate. Like, I don't feel you need to do that in a game such as Yu Gi Oh! anyway, where it's really a fair. Well, it, it's meant to be like a fair, balanced game akin to chess. I don't see why you need to cheat so and be so brazen about it. <laughs> That's all you need to be. <laughs> you have to wait outside. For in the car park, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, listen, uh, especially like because it, it, uh, at locals and stuff as well. If you do well, you actually win packs or boxes. Oh, nice. so it's like if you if you do badly, it's like it is what it is. Yeah. Like if if you're getting the top seats, and and you can get like fifteen, twenty, even up to like fifty five pounds worth of free merchandise. You do pretty well for yourself. <laughs> oh, well, fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> I think what I will always remember about Yu-Gi-Oh is waking up early mornings on the Saturday to mm. just catch it on Nickelodeon because I was about that age where you know I could recognize the difference between American cartoons and anime so mm. you know I was watching my Pokemon I was watching my Dragon Ball Z and then I'd flick on the other channel and, and I'd see card capture Sakura and then afterwards I see Yu-Gi-Oh so then I started to watch Card Captain Sakura because I knew Yu-Gi-Oh would follow it. 
Mm. And every morning, I just really loved the the story. I just loved what what Yugi and I guess Atem stood for. When I say Yugi, I actually mean Atem. Yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 everyone does. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, spoiler alert for anyone, but Yugi has won like one match, and it was the biggest bullshit ever. It doesn't count, okay? Like, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, we all, I, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I would always love to see how Atem would overcome the odds, how he would beat people like Panic, beat Pegasus, beat mm-hmm. Merrick, um, even the, the arcs that weren't really good, like the Grand Prix arc, I didn't like that one. Um, the Orikalkos arc, eh, it wasn't my favorite, but. <laughs> I like them to an extent that I like the archetypes that came from them. Sure. I, I love the dragon designs and that kind of stuff. But yeah, that, that, that was a that was a good Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think I like that was more Yu-Gi-Oh. But like even when I'm a kid and watching it, I'm just not engaged with it. And mm-hmm. like I don't even care about the story too much. So yeah, now having gone watched it back, I'm like, yeah, those are those are not good arcs. Those are most yeah. likely filler. Um but yeah, I really loved uh, Duelist Kingdom, which I've gone back to watch because mm-hmm. for some reason, the, 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 the duel between Yugi and Pegasus, it's always like escapes me because I think logically I'm like, Yugi shouldn't win this. <laughs> like <laughs> from what I've seen, Yugi shouldn't win this, but so, you know, he always, obviously he always Even the heart wins. of the cards, Andy. Yeah. yeah heart of the cards. It's, it's cheating like banded keys. So it's <laughs> slipping in another card into the deck. <laughs> So I just I just want to take off point for just a quick second, but if you've watched Yu-Gi-Oh GX as well, um, actually looking at the deck profiles, the fact that they draw the same cards time and time again is proof that they stack their decks. They never shuffle their decks, and I feel like that's also applicable to Duelist Kingdom, because even though we see them shuffle, we see them shuffle in half decks. Mm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a case of the deck isn't shuffled enough, so it's a point of you recognise what cards are coming out next, which is why he always knew what the heart of the card was. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? That's a great point, actually. So, like, with Mai and Joey, in their first mm-hmm. duel where, like, Mai, Mai, sorry, Mai sprayed each of her cards with yep. a different scent, I, f- I felt like that's what Yugi was doing. Maybe he was bending a card a little bit. <laughs> so, all right, this is Slifer. <laughs> <laughs> He always knew when to drop the speech. He always mm-hmm. knew when to look at flipping Tristan and Taya. I mean, I will always say, you know, Yugi is one of my favorite protagonists just because he was different for me as a shonen mm-hmm. protag. He wasn't taking after the archetype of Goku, you, yeah. which we've seen in Naruto and Luffy and gone to a lesser extent. He was a smart main character. He was a quiet main character. He wasn't a confident main character. He wasn't a physically imposing guy. So he had mm-hmm. to literally be a smart guy to work his way around the uh, story and the villains. Mm. So you did mention GX earlier. Of course, I've watched GX. I can't remember if I watched every episode because at a certain point, I was like, what is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> um, I've watched 5Ds as well. I've watched a few episodes of Zexor. How much of each, I guess, part of Yu-Gi-Oh have you watched? Have you watched them all? So I fully watched original Yu-Gi-Oh! every single season. Um, mm-hmm. GX, I got to, I think it's like the last arc where it just, I wasn't into it. Um, yeah. It was where they made Jaden evil. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like, I didn't, I didn't feel that. Um, was that because they made Jaden evil or was it more so you felt like they just took shortcuts to make that happen? That was just a plot point. That it was definitely a plot point in my opinion, um, and it was just like the the way they wrote like wrote all as well. It was like it seemed very forced, mm. at least to memory. It's, it's been a, a long time since I've watched it, but like, um, but yeah. And then it was like how he was treating his his, his friends and everything. It's like, cool, I get you're you're a bad guy now, but like even um, like in Beyblade when Kai turned evil and had uh, black drums, like it's like. He still showed an, an income of respect. He's like, mm. and but Jade is like, no, 
I am trying to kill you now, and that's the end of that. <laughs> this happy-go-lucky guy who like is the only person who's ever nice to the old uh, cafeteria lady. Like, <laughs> he, he stops mid-door to have a snack, and is like, "You you changed too much." Yeah, that's a very good point. I think the change is illogical and so opposite, so different mm. that there's no consistency within the character, yeah. which is. For me, although I didn't like the Orikalkos arc, I very much loved the part where Yugi played the Orikalkos Orikalkos card against Raphael, because I, his motive. <laughs> hey, that's you know what top ten duels of the whole series. I watched the dub and the sub version. <laughs> Amazing scenes. <laughs> I've wanted to see someone do that to him for a long time. Uh, but with the Yugi versus Raphael duel, you can see the consistencies of his character. He would do anything to protect his friend. His other me was in danger, um, so he thought. But it was just paranoia. This guy, Atem, doesn't lose. He's not used to it. And I'm glad that they finally made this part of him that was just... Um, what do you call it? Standard shown in writing. You know, good guy wins. They finally made that into a major plot point later on into the door because he's like, I'm the good guy. I'm meant to win. And his desperation pushed him over the edge. That, for me, was a very natural transition or a switch of alignment. And then he does come back because he then sees the error of his ways. But that moment there, I felt, was good because you could see the consistencies in the character of Yugi, who is admittedly a much darker version of Yugi. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. So uh, I was gonna say to to go back to GX, just like to to round that point off. Um, they they never actually finished the end of GX as well. Like the the final like battles, it it never got finished. So it's like you you you've done a complete one eighty on this character, and you don't really know if he's ended in that manner or like if he's gonna have his redemption arc or whatever. Like. Yeah, it, it said it was a lot more fluid with um, Atem than with Jaden. And yeah, it just, I, it didn't sit well with me. Yeah, I hear that. I heard there were some dubbing issues with late GX. I can't remember if it was the penultimate or the final season, as you said, mm. that they either didn't get the rights to or they just didn't want to dub. Or I know something was going on with four kids around the time because yeah. essentially everyone hated what they were doing with anime. So not all of gx got dubbed i think so that might be why mm. it just it did seem rushed and incomplete <laughs> while four kids did a lot of things wrong <laughs> i will say and then this could extend to other companies as companies as well i think when it comes to dubbed anime openings four kids did an amazing job you look at pokemon mm -hmm. you look at Yu-Gi-Oh, you look at one piece as bad as the actual content of one piece the episodes were terrible that one piece rap banging <laughs> amazing amazing stuff so really quickly mm -hmm. which is your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh series is it classic Yu-Gi-Oh is it GX is it even season zero so that that's really hard um like as as far as like nostalgia goes I want to say original Yu-Gi-Oh, but as far as like content and like side characters and just like fleshing out things that are, I kind of want to say um, Arc V. Oh, okay. So again, banging opening. Um, I hated what they introduced with it, with the pendulum summoning, because the man literally cheated. He, he started swinging his necklace around, and he's like, I've made up new rules, and you have to play by them. <laughs> um, but as far as, like, the depth of some of the characters, like uh, Kong Strong and... Um, oh, crap, I've immediately forgotten his name. Uh, there's a little, like, blue-head kid. Um, but... And there's a few other side characters and everything. Like they have amazing backstories and character arcs and everything. And it's like it gives you more. It gives you more, and it gives you wanting more after as well. That's a very solid pick, and I like that it was very left field from what I was expecting you to say. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I'm going to be basic and say original Yu-Gi-Oh! is my favorite series. I think just because of the nostalgia, the art style, it was the first time that I saw anime draw drawn that well. Mm. And I don't know how to phrase this, but it just seemed that the mangaka or whoever it was that were animating, doing the art, cared about the series looking good. They were very particular. Mm about you know yugi's hair colors they were very particular about kaiba's jacket everything seemed like almost like a fashion show for anime you know yeah. everyone looks good um and then obviously going past the visuals i i do like the whole story of ancient egypt and we've got these old artifacts in this you know mystical land far away people have um, special powers, the seven millennium items, which I was able to relate to the seven Dragon Balls. Anything mm -hmm. that I could compare to Dragon Ball was, you know, good for me. Um, I always loved watching the Thames duels, and a lot of the major villains I was a big fan of, like Pegasus. You know, I w I was so invested in seeing him lose that mm -hmm. I loved his duel against Kaiba. I loved his duel, even though know, even through the VCR and episode two or three. Um, Marek, I thought he was a very complex villain, mm -hmm. um, especially while re uh, especially going back to rewatch. I think Marek is a very complex human being. Loved yeah. his arc. Um, sorry, were you gonna add on to that? Well, I was gonna say that, um, like considering his backstory and everything as well, like they they really put in like to explain why, and I appreciated that so much more because it's not like oh yeah he's the bad guy let's hate the bad guy. It's like no no there is a reason. Yeah. yeah yeah and whether that makes you support him more or whether you just understand where he's coming from or mm. hate him even more because he has a backstory because there's a source of the hate it makes him seem more human yeah especially if you check out the japanese version of the manga yeah <laughs> it's a good thing that Merrick is playing card games and not murdering people <laughs> because they tortured that young man um yeah uh yeah. Yeah. Even Bakura, his backstory and how it like just loops around and I was just always in the peripheral. Like you see him and you're like, okay, he's evil, but like he's just a mischievous guy. He's not like mm -hmm. he's not the big bad and then final season all of a sudden. So I loved Yu-Gi-Oh! for the journey that the series took me on. Loved it, loved watching it. I I was a big fan of GX. Um to be honest, it was just too happy for me. Um, <laughs> where is the shadow realm? Where are the tears? That that was in the final arc. <laughs> That's where that was. <laughs> Maybe wait for that shit. <laughs> um, but I will give a special shout out to season zero because I think that's what. If I watched season zero first, that would be my answer because mm. I think they had their mature way of looking at things. It wasn't just card games, which you know, of course, that's what the anime is selling. But there was more to it. It was more about the the mental fortitude about. Um, Yugi, who I still believe was cheating <laughs> back in that season, but just how his his unique way of dealing with um, adversaries mm. and just how he coped with problems really liked that. Um, I guess that story, and I wish that went longer. I wish it did, and I wish it. I wish it got a dub by like uh, you know maybe an eighteen plus Funimation or modern day Funimation, for example. Yeah, it but, could. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought it told a very good story. So let's get into the game because uh, Kazuki Takahashi, of course, a big gaming fan. Um, he was a fan of, uh, I think it's Shogi, um, a lot of other card games, not card games, board games, uh, Mahjong. He was a fan of RPGs as well. Of course, you talked about how you go to local competitions and play Yu-Gi-Oh! So I assume you were a big fan of the card game. Mm -hmm. um, for me growing up, it was uh, Pokemon cards. I think Digimon cards made a brief appearance, but they didn't last long. No. I know I had a stint with Dragon Ball Z cards. Yu-Gi-Oh! was like the main thing that teachers knew, and <laughs> they call Dragon Ball Z cards Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. They call uh, Pokemon cards Yu-Gi-Oh! cards at some point. Um, and then Beyblades came for a hot minute as well. What was your first memory with the physical Yu-Gi-Oh! card game, and what was your experience playing the game, you know, in school, etc.? Um, so... When I was, well, when Yu-Gi-Oh first came out, um, my my parents didn't have that much money, so I I had the 
I got the Yugi deck. So I had one copy of the Yugi deck. Um, and whenever like birthday or Christmas would come around, I'd get like some like, pocket money here and there. I'd save up uh, between like, Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards for myself. Um, and the my my biggest moment is um, I, I got a single pack because I only afford one pack and I opened it. And I got the a shiny sort of revealing light. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and um and I was like, yes, this is immediately going into my deck. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah, so like me and my cousins that would uh, would play quite frequently. Um and then when it, it like every now and again, like I said for Christmas birthdays, like if my parents had the money, they'd get me like another deck here or there, whatever. Um, but it wasn't until I was into my, oh my lord, I was in my teenage years. Uh, I was in college where I started actually playing properly and everything. And my my favorite god card's always been Cypher Sky Dragon. That's my favorite too. Yeah, Men of Culture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and I got a a box. Um, Oh my god, what's I think it I think it's like Battle of Gods or something. I can't remember what the box is called, but it was the this box of uh it had one of the first boxes that had god cards in it. Okay. Um outside of like the the what do you call it? Like promotion pack stuff. And I packed myself a cypher sky dragon. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so that, 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 those are like my big moments. <laughs> oh, fair. fair. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely Slifer is my favorite out of the big three gods. Um, partly because it was Yugi's and partly because it was red. So mm. that's me. I remember being 10 and wanting so badly a Yugi deck because that's that was just what I wanted. I wanted to be like Yugi. I wanted to, you know, use Reborn the Monster and play with Dark Magicians and Black Magic, the uh, Black Magicians of Chaos and stuff. Mm. Um, so the first time I felt, the first time I got a Yugi deck, I felt like king of the world. I think my brother got a Kyber deck and we just played each other constantly. I, I hate the Kyber deck so much because like, they're just like blue eyes. Every time, <laughs> blue eyes. It's like, yeah, but like I have to add like six things onto my dot magician just to make it viable. It's like it's not fair. <laughs> it's like Yugi beats him all the time. Why can't I do it? <laughs> well, he always has to use tricks. He always has to use a uh, magical hat or the spellbinding yeah. circle. So the dark magician can't straight up beat the blue eyes. And I think that is almost like a metaphor to show how the main character just needs to be better than the traditionally more talented rival. So mm. I do like that. But in real life. You just you just can't call in the heart of the cards, right? You just can't call the dark magician when you have no monsters on the field and one thousand life points left, right? Heart of the cards just doesn't work like that. <laughs> uh, I I also remember when starting secondary school, I think from year seven to year nine, Yugi Yu-Gi-Oh cards were so popular. Mm. Um, they were the drugs at the time. Like, if yep. teachers saw them, you lost them. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we had to like sneak around, we'd hide in like rooms and play Yu Gi Oh cards. Uh, we'd play Yu Gi Oh. And uh, I remember once this guy bought a dual disc and went into school. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, he was a legend because. He was cosplaying as an actual Yu-Gi-Oh character. And when I say cosplaying, I mean like he would react as if he was from the anime. So he would properly shout, attack his life points directly. And <laughs> when he lost a monster, he'd like go to his knees and go, no, in front of everyone. He had no shame. And I respect him for that. <laughs> yes. uh, you have to, you have to get into it. Now, I don't know if you've seen the... Um... I think it might be like a vine. Uh, they're, they're, they're recording some guys at locals, and that the, it's not even the main match that they're recording. It's the guys next to their match that um, it is, and you can you can hear him doing the maths. And he's like, "Okay, so that's two thousand plus three thousand. That's that's five thousand eight hundred points. I've only got five thousand seven hundred points. 
no! And you sort of froze himself back and it's like, yes. That's it. That's it. We just need people to commit. Send yourself to the Shadow Realm, boys. Oh, uh, yeah. It's always funny how trends change and what the kids will play with. Um, I know Pokemon cards dominated for a long mm. time. Beyblade was very popular as well. Um, I was a big fan of Beyblade as well. And hopefully yes. we can get to a Beyblade pod one of these days. I'm, I'm down for it. <laughs> yes. I, I, I recently bought a pack of 12 Beyblades. I'm down for it. <laughs> of course, the legacy of Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to be its card game. Mm-hmm. I think one of the most successful transitions from show to actual product that makes money. I think you're going to know a lot better than me just how much money Yu-Gi-Oh can cost you, how much money Yu-Gi-Oh can generate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can. <laughs> you don't have to say this if you don't want to, but are you willing to say how much you think you spent on Yu-Gi-Oh in your lifetime? Okay, how much I think I've spent? Yeah. Oh can be a very rough estimate okay so i'm gonna say i'm gonna say in my lifetime about fifteen thousand pound you know what that's not that bad (laughs) like i i i'm a 29 year old man who's been collecting them since i was like eight or nine or something around around that time so it's not terrible. <laughs> it's not terrible. It's a lot, but it's not terrible. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've also seen your collection, so it makes sense. I do feel like you've got your money's worth. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm just like, my, I, my, my collection fills a, I think it's a, a 20 gallon box. And, and it doesn't <laughs> even all fit in there. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> If if you give me if you give me a second, I can actually see the size of the box and, and give you precise figures. <laughs> just, just for realization of it, hang on. Let's go for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure about the gallons to to liter ratio, but it's an eighty liter box. Eighty liter. Um, let's just do a, do, do a quick math check on that one. Uh, Seventeen point five. Yeah, close. Yeah, enough. you're not far off. <laughs> that's insane also very impressive like i don't know if you're ever going to go competitive again but i mean it seems like you've got the arm power i mean I, i'd love to like my, my biggest problem with it is i like playing like to anime scenes like all of my decks are like are like the big anime cards i, I love the tune cards i love exodia and all that kind of stuff like, i i live for those big anime moments it's like it's my turn, and I draw. <gasps> I've got Exodia. So like, yeah, that 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 for me is it. Whereas everyone now, it's like, okay, I'm gonna stop you playing Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah, essentially, I'm just gonna yeah. win, shut you out in the most boring way possible. Mm-hmm. But I guess I get it. They're, they're trying to win, but I would appreciate a more balanced, entertaining affair. You know? Yeah. So on that note, when it comes to like the real life game, what is off the top of your head your favorite part about going to locals or going to competitions, and what is your least favorite thing? And the third question: How would you improve the game? How would you improve the the scene? Okay, so my favorite thing about it is is the tension and the high end moments. Like if Regardless of if you have a good deck or a bad deck, um, it can sometimes be down to the luck of the cards or the heart of the cards, should I say? <laughs> and it, it makes it makes those memorable moments. Um, like there's there's one point that was always going to stick out for me. I was um, it was the time that the Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon had just been printed. Um, the guy had just made uh, what seemed at the time to be a, an unstoppable Blue Eyes deck. He was able to flood the board on repeat with just mm. three thousand plus monsters, um, and not only did I beat him with my crappy little deck, I made him 
walk away from the table out of frustration. <laughs> so he filled the board with two Blue Eyes Ultimates, uh, a Blue Eyes Alternative, um, Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon, I think, yeah. Um, and another, I can't remember the other one. I think it's like Azor, Azor Eyes or something. Um, got all five of them out. Dark hole. The god. <laughs> yeah. His turn swung round again. I said this at the time. This deck was broken as fuck. Um, he's flooded the board again with roughly the same board. Rageki, gone. <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, he's used a lot of resources at this point. I've used two cards. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm slowly like building up our board a little bit. Like, um, I played uh, Junk Synchron Monsters, and so I'm building up a little bit, a little bit. Wiped him out twice. Third turn comes around. He, he floods the board again. And he has me on the ropes. I think I'm down to like 1,500 life points, somewhere around that. Um, and he's like all like bragging. He's like, yeah, this is this is it. Um, I've managed to get my Junk Synchron out, pull back on the card. And then with one card I had left on the field, um, I managed to get out Black Rose Dragon. I don't know if you know the card or not, but what it does is it has the option to blow itself up and the rest of the field. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so for three turns in a row, I've just wiped the man's field out. <laughs> and that, and that right there is what I live for <laughs> when it comes to going to locals. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can beat me and you can have the fun, but making me not have fun. But I will enjoy my little moments. Um, but yeah, then, then, then it comes to the non fun bit. It's people like that. Um, and it's just a smell. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. The smell is awful. I, I don't know what it is about. Maybe it's a generational thing. Like maybe it's it's just a like a Yu-Gi-Oh player thing. I'm feeling it might be just a Yu-Gi-Oh player right. thing because like most of my friends shower. Like <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but part of me thinks it's a war tactic. It might be. To just it could, be a, you it could out. be a war tactic. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're just distracted by the the several odors coming in yeah. your direction. <laughs> so, what was the third one again? So, uh, if you had unlimited power, how would you change the oh, Yu-Gi-Oh just, game? How would I change it? Um. Oh, that's, that's a really tough question. I feel like I would probably take. I would remove Pendulum and Link Summoning. That's Pendulum fair. makes the game too quick. Link Summoning makes the game too slow, which is why they then reverted back to, even though they've included both of them, they've now allowed them to work in tangent, and then they've then limited your magic and spell card traps by two spaces. Because originally when Pendulum Zone happened, they had their own separate zones, so you could still have five back row and then Pendulums. Right. Um, and yeah, I feel like both of those... Um, mechanisms change the game for the worse uh like obviously I, i'm not opposed to using them like i will if i'm like competing locally or whatever because you have to yeah. but it's a case of you have to do it and yeah i i, I don't i don't like them so I, i'd remove i'd remove those if i had the opportunity that's fair and i wholeheartedly agree with you because i hate both of those <laughs> when i found out what pendulum and link summoning were i was like i think i'm out i think i'm done <laughs> yeah like it yeah like you, you sorry go on go on no I'm, I'm just i'm just i'm just in my own head i'm just like <laughs> 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 like obviously Yu-Gi-Oh is a complex game and there mm -hmm. are levels to this but i do think in essence it's a very simple game it's straightforward you have your mm -hmm. phases there's an order to things and you have types of cards. You have stars, you have types, you have, you know, I, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is one of the most straightforward games I've ever played. And that's a good thing. But stuff like Link Summoning and Pendulum Summoning, I think it's taken away what made Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! for me. Mm. And as you said, it, it, it takes away the natural flow of a game for me. And, and as you said, a game becomes too fast or a game becomes too slow. And like the Abridged series says, like a good duel just takes a very long time and it should be like that. Yeah. That's how it should be. Um, 
really quickly, I did want to get your thoughts on if someone was watching this and was like, rah, I kind of want to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, this this man, this pastor, this Lord Pastor, Rashford vibes, yeah, he's got me <laughs> back into the game. Look, I've got that itch. I want to get back into the game. Or someone who's never played the game before who wants to get into it for the first time, what advice would you give them to get into Yu-Gi-Oh and have fun with it? Okay, so there is a game which is free on basically every platform known to man um, called Master Duels. Uh, just playing the game for like an hour or so gives you enough free in-game currency to make two to three solid decks, depending on what packs you open. Um, you can, like, depending on the cards that you get, you can kind of like Steamline to get certain decks um, to, to make sure you, you have the ones that you want. Personally, I would say test that out uh, if you're looking to get into like back into it and everything because it will have all the new mechanics it all it won't let you do illegal moves as well um that's that's the very important bit um but also like if you are looking to get back into the game or whatever um best advice possible look at structure decks get three copies of the structure deck and build one deck from those three decks. Because more often than not, there'll be one broken card in there that you will want three of. Um, there was a deck that came out recently, I think it was called... I know it's called Albaz, I can't remember the first, the other bit of it. Um, I think it might be like Blast of Albaz or something along those lines. But the cards that were in that worked so well together, if you got three copies, that you could in one week without playing the game, if you got the cards, you could literally get top three in locals. Wow. A, 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 Yugi, a, a Yugi tuber that I watched did it. He literally got three decks. He didn't He didn't get any extra cards, nothing. He literally bought, so it's like 22 pound because it's normally seven pound a deck. Um, 22 pound on the table, put the decks together, got top three in locals. Damn. So between buying structure decks and playing master doors, that would be how I'd suggest getting back into the game or into it for the very first time. Excellent. Nice and succinct. I want to see if we could either rank or just say outright what your favourite Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu protagonist is. Wow, Freudian slip there. Um, because you've had so many. You've got Yu-Gi, <laughs> you've got Who, Who's your favourite protagonist <laughs> and why is it Yu-Gi? <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, but I mean, there are different strokes of different folks. I was at the very big panel of Jaden's Happy Go Lucky Nature and mm -hmm. his, you know, Cypher Red costume. Yes. So there's obviously Jaden Yuki, there's Yusei Fudo, who I really liked his look. Yeah. You have Yuma, you have Yuya. I'm pretty sure there's other <laughs> Yus in there that I'm not familiar with. <laughs> but um, we, I mean, answer the question however you want, whether you want to just um, outright say your favorite or I'm going to give him a ranking. I feel like it's always going to be Yuki. Yuki's always going to yeah. be number one, regardless. Um, as, mu as much as I do love, uh, like you say, and Jaden, it has to be Yugi. Yeah. <laughs> like, he started it, he ended it. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I uh, is it, it's Yu Ya is, uh, Zexel, right? I think, I'll just look this up really quickly. Yu Ya is Arc V or Arc okay. 5. Okay. Okay, so he's second bottom. Um, I, as, as, as much as as much as I love, like, I I really genuinely love Ark Ar Um but he's he's just jarring as fuck. He he just is. Um, he looks the, like one you of know, those it's, hyperactive it's the, kids. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the one before that. It's the the, the uh, one that Yuma. introduced you. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I didn't like him. He just seemed like a whiny bitch. I won't <laughs> lie to you. Like. I, I think I only ever watched about ten or fifteen episodes of that of that series, and I I was just done with it. Between him and the, is it Astra or Astral? Yeah, the, the ghosty guy. Yeah, yeah it just, it just I just didn't I just didn't deal with it. Um, yeah, is it Astral? Yeah, I I I just felt that that was. Hey, you remember the original Yu Gi Oh? Well, yeah. here's it, but a little bit of GX sprinkle, and it just didn't feel like its own thing. Yeah, I, I tried. I really tried because it was Yu-Gi-Oh, but I just couldn't get into it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I think Jaden's probably second. 
yeah, Jaden's probably second, and then you say third. So it's literally in in uh, anime order. <laughs> <laughs> they get worse each time. <laughs> oh god! Explains why I've not watched a new season. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I agree with that. I might switch Jaden and you say, mm. but I will probably if I'm gonna you know put my foot down and this is the hill from bottom to top. I'm probably going Yuya at the bottom because. I didn't even watch Arc 5. I heard it was a thing, but after Zexu, I was like, nah, I think I'm good. I'm getting out of the game, lads. Yuma is right above him because I could tell the game had changed from watching the couple of episodes that I did. Mm. wasn't a fan. Um, as I said before, the dynamic just seemed like it was a Tesco value, Yugi Atem kind of situation. Mm. wasn't a fan of that. I'll probably say you say third, just because I, I watched more GX than 5Ds, and yeah. I really did enjoy GX. So then Jaden goes second, because his personality was very different to Yugi. He was very competent, and that was clear from day mm -hmm. one. But I do like that the story took a different turn. Like the um, the last Airbender, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Ang versus Korra. It's the yeah. same world, but of course, it's a different time. It's a different situation, landscape, so they should follow different paths and their personalities should be different. Jaden second, of course, Yugi first, because he's the OG. I think for me, he's like the personality that I resonate the most with. And he's got the coolest design. Also, though, we're both saying Yugi. We mean a Tem. Like, if, if anything, yeah. Yugi's at that. He's sixth. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> I, I think Yugi is chilling with Yuma and Yuya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> any three, any order, those three at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I do mean a Tem. I think there was just a lot to like about him. Dan Green did an exceptional job voice acting him. Mm. It just seemed, it just commanded the room, his presence. Um, the fact that he was more or less a genius at the game. He could just win from any position. They took away his Exodia cards, still managed to win. You know, they mm -hmm. tried to handicap this man so many ways. And he always, almost always kicked. There's the one time, though, when Kaiba <laughs> threatened to jump off the top of the castle. <laughs> so, yeah. so that, that's what it takes to beat the man. It's like, all right, I, I, I'm, I'm, now, I'm now leaning on your kind-heartedness. It's like, if you don't let me win... <laughs> You're you know what? When your conscience. You know what's mad? A ten was gonna go through with it. He was. <laughs> he was. Your tail was like no. Yeah. Hey, a ten knows for the love of the game. <laughs> I don't need friends. I just need the streets. <laughs> no, that, that, that's why he's the best. That's why he's the goat. <laughs> he, he's the epitome of fuck you and your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what it takes to win. <laughs> oh god um yeah i think that yeah he he just knew how to win all of the situations i'm sure he lost a, a duel i know he lost to yugi at the end spoilers i feel like he lost uh, Raphael. Yeah, um, so so he he technically lost to to pegasus and the videotape yes uh he loses to kyber on the castle yugi's fault but yeah yeah um <laughs> And then I'm pretty sure he doesn't lose again until the Raphael. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so he's had three losses in his entire career, which isn't bad. That's impressive. Like, That's a very good streak. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's to go. Uh, but <laughs> I want to ask you about, I mean, and you've already kind of answered this earlier, any standout cards that you've held, that you've played with, that you've seen even in the anime or in a game. Um, what have been some of your favorite cards to play with? So, uh, because of 5Ds, one of my favorite decks to play is the Junk Synchron deck. Um, okay. Having like having the little orange guy with his scarf in the wind, <laughs> <laughs> like, be, being able to turn into all of these absolutely top end monsters, like from Junk Synchron, uh, yeah, Junk Synchron to um, Junk Destroyer, Berserker. There, there's so many uh, awesome like transformations for him. Um, but my my all time favorite deck is my Tune deck. Nice. I love the Tune cards with a burning passion. <laughs> like they. 
they're not the most expensive card I own, but they are the most they're the most I've spent money on. Um, with the yeah. most recent, or well, one of the most recent, like tomb sets that came out, um, they they made a tomb black cluster soldier, mm. and I'm not proud to say that I spent close to thirty pound on one piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's that bad. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I <laughs> I thought you were gonna have I th- the number you were gonna say. I thought we were gonna have commas in it. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> like, to be fair, w- without like the outstanding cards, most Yu-Gi-Oh cards cost like pennies to pounds. Like, sure. mo- for for the most part, you will pick up a card for between nine pence and like seventy nine pence. Like the majority of Yu-Gi-Oh cards you can get for those prices, it's the odd ones here and there that will be like between the pound mark and up to fifteen, and then it's the exceptional cards that will be beyond that. Um, and yeah, th- those prices can hit comma marks. Uh, yeah, there's there's one one of the hero cards um, that's going for like nearly eight grand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like abs- absolute joke. <laughs> Eight thousand pound for one piece of cardboard when, when like twenty other copies of that same piece of cardboard exist. <laughs> I guess it's a seller's market, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, my my, my tune cards: the the tune Dark Magician, Black Cluster Soldier, tune Red Eyes. That's... There were a lot of tune monsters. <laughs> there, there are there are a lot of tune monsters, and they are amazing. Yeah. Um, there is an extensive history of Yu-Gi-Oh games, video games. Yes. So they've been very successful in that avenue as well. One of the most successful franchises, I'd say. What have been some of your most, you know, what have been some of your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh games? There's been so many. So there have been. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna get out there, and I know it's gonna get hate. I never liked the the World Series games. They were too hard. <laughs> every, every time, every time, it'd be a case of Cyberstein, 5k life points, Blue Eyes, Armor Dragon. Like, give okay. me a yeah. chance. <laughs> like, I, I'm out here, turn one with Beaver Warrior. You're out here, turn one with four, four, 500 Beater. Like, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I absolutely loved um, Forbidden Memories. Banger, banging game. banging game, absolute banging game. Um, twi- twin edited uh, Thunder Dragon. Oh, oh, oh. S- <laughs> stick all of the equip spells on that thing. <laughs> oh, um, uh, Forbidden Memories. I loved the Duelist of the Roses because it did something very different with the game. Um, it, it was kind of like the 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 dual uh, dual master, whatever. The um, when Taylor uh, when Taylor became a penguin, <laughs> uh, or a penguin monsters? became Taylor. yeah, it, it was that. So like they they had like their deck master. Um, oh yes, that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So that, that it was that style of game. Like you had an open like ten by ten board. You had your deck master, and then you'd play cards off of that, and like that you'd move them around the board like a kind of chess kind of thing, um, trying to chase after your opponent's one to deal damage to them. I really liked that and. Yeah, what they do to that, um, and there is one other game. Um, I've lost his name. I forgot the name, Andy. What what, <laughs> since, what system was it on? Um, I can't remember either. It's just <laughs> gone. It's just, no, there it is. Um, it was one of my favorite games, and it was one of the first ones I actually bought myself. Um, it was on the Game Boy Advance. It was called. Sacred Cards. That sounds familiar. Um, part of the reason I loved it when you bought the game, it came with a copy of Graceful Dice, Skull Dice, and Exchange. <laughs> nice. I was, I was very happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you watch the anime, Joey has basically won so many duels of that combo of Graceful and Skull Dice. Yes. And I even love how. I think it was Esperoba, how he got confused because he was cheating in the game too. And he thought that Joey had multiple graceful dice, graceful dice. 
and Joey had a skull dice instead of a gray skull dice, but it, it alluded to the real life rule of you can't have duplicates of certain cards in your deck, which I always find fascinating because the the, the anime should make you want to play the game and the game should make you want to watch the anime. Mm. So yeah, little stuff like that. Really appreciate. Um, I really love it. Sorry, did you want to say something? No, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just smiling. Happy all these songs. <laughs> I really love the shouts of Forbidden Memories and Duelist of the Roses. I think that's the, the latter, especially is one that doesn't get a, a lot of love. I think just because it was different, mm. people say they want different until they get different. But I think because it was like the roses and it symbolized what it did, mm. I just loved it. I don't remember playing the game too often, too much, too much, but that game was still a lot of fun for me especially the cover loved playing that game forbidden memories is probably the one game that i played the most mm. and i'd love it if they made a remake but uh... <laughs> listen listen yeah i i will sell a kidney to make sure i have the funds <laughs> to buy that game like it's like i don't care how broke i am how well like i i will do what i need to do if they make a remake of that game <laughs> I'm first in line. <laughs> so it's literally like, Fry, take my money, please. <laughs> Love that. So one of the things that I really liked from Past Assault when it came to, you know, just your general content was the daily Yu-Gi-Oh card posts on Instagram. So would you like to talk a little bit about what the inspiration behind that was, um, whether you'd kick off that series again? Because I thought it was really cool how, you know, each day there was something new and you definitely have the cards to make that last. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, so my, my life took a bit of a change and I wasn't able to make the content I wanted to. So as a kind of a filler in the time, I... So uh, Pass Assault originally was inspired by Yukio. I said... Um, me and Isaac used to play at locals all the time and the word sort would get thrown around a lot, uh, especially with people being the way that they were. Um, right. And I, said, I, I have a burning passion for Yu-Gi-Oh! And I, apparently, I just don't like having money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so it, it was a case of uh, uh, the... Uh, the initial idea behind us was opening Yu-Gi-Oh packs, playing some duels, and on our, our on our YouTube channel there is actually some like pack openings and a couple matches on there. Um, not the best quality, but we, we can work on that in the future. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a case of it was something that I could do quite easily. Um, the reason it stopped again is because my health went a bit further down again, but. Hopefully I'm going back to it and yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. And um, it said, I've, I've got the quality, the, the quantity for it, sorry. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of like, there's there's so many different archetypes uh, within Yu-Gi-Oh that don't get valued or like get underappreciated or like just completely bypassed because it's like, oh, this card is worth three pence and it doesn't do all the cool things and the breaking things that the, the other card does. But like, a lot of people don't know that they have an entire archetype based around uh, uh, Nordic religion. Right. Yeah. Like, they they have Odin, Loki, and Thor as a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Uh, that that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's like small, small things like that that I was like, yeah, like not only do I already have the cards, but it's like I can show people what kind of cards that they're missing out on as well. Beautiful. So as we wrap up, thank you so much, Pastor, for coming on the pod, gracing us with your presence thank you. and just giving us all the knowledge of Yu-Gi-Oh. Where can the people follow you, find out more about you? Uh, so on Twitch, it is Pastor Sort 491 I'm pretty sure on instagram and twitter is also uh 491 i can't remember my, my youtube channel wendy <laughs> <laughs> i can't remember it <laughs> youtube channel is past the start i'm pretty sure <laughs> oh god i can't remember jeff what's, what's going on <laughs> i don't know jeff i don't know <laughs> um 
Okay, oh, so, okay, so literally all platforms, Pass the Sort 491, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice and easy to remember. Yes. We'll put all the links somewhere on the screen that will be in the description if you're listening to this. And we would like to take this moment to say rest in peace to Kazuki Takahashi once again. As you have just heard, we've been talking for about an hour upon this thing that you created, the great art styles, you know, those funky drawings that all the monsters, you truly created a legacy, which will outlive all of us. Thank you so much for your work. You are the true king of games. Rest in peace, Kazuki Takahashi. Yeah, forever missed, but never forgotten. He, he has changed like three or four generations lives over and like, you can't be thankful like, you can't be more thankful should i say I, yeah yeah yes. yeah, yeah. R- r- rest f- in peace and... yeah by far one of the most influential franchises anime products in our lifetimes so yeah the your legacy will live on. So will the legacy of Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm. Now to awkwardly transition into promoting Streamcast. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you follow not the king of games, but gamers all the same. Streamcast underscore on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Subscribe to our YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment. Let us know who your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh protagonist was, what your favorite part of Yu-Gi-Oh is. Do you have any favorite cards? And do you go and play in real life? Let us know. How good a Yu-Gi-Oh player are you? You can also follow us on Twitch, Streamcast TV, and our website, thestreamcast.co.uk, where you can catch our gaming blogs and be the first to know about upcoming events. There may be one coming very, very soon. Keep your eyes peeled for that. And of course, you can listen to our podcast wherever you like, whether it's Spotify, Apple, or another platform of your choosing. Just search Streamcast and follow and or subscribe. But that will be all from me, Black Amora. Just before you end up, just before you end up, I just want to say, as a a pastor and a lord and a Yu-Gi-Oh judge, if you listening or watching right now, don't go and follow Streamcast. What are you even doing with your lives? <laughs> like, you've been here for an hour and you haven't followed? Like, get it together. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I appreciate that, bro, so much. <laughs> you heard the man. Don't get sent to the Shadow Realm. Make sure you join the wholesome community of Pastor Soul and Streamcast. Keep it locked. Please take care of yourselves and your loved ones. And we will see you on the next Streamcast.